<laughs> as I said, thank you again. I share the belief that the, New Jersey, the health of New Jersey's economy depends on the creates, creative redevelopment of our urban areas. Um, consider this. 30% of New Jersey residents live within walking distance of a rail station. 75% of New Jersey residents live within five miles of a station. And 25% of all New Jersey towns host a rail station. The landscape of New Jersey is, studied, is studded with big cities and small ones. It is increasingly clear that many young adults and empty nesters um, are choosing urban environments as a place to live. Smart, successful redevelopment projects, whether commercial, residential, or mixed use, don't happen by chance. Successful urban redevelopment projects incorporate features that residents and employers are looking for. They have the power to lift neighborhoods and even entire cities. I won't presume to tell a room such as this with real estate experts how to make that happen, but I do recognize a successful redevelopment project when I see it. So that's what I'm going to focus my remarks on. Many of the best examples of urban redevelopment in New Jersey leverage our, or enhance our existing public transportation infrastructure. A multiple modes of uh, transit anchors, spectacular renaissance in Hudson County, waterfront, the allure of Newark, the success of New Brunswick. In fact, the Hudson, when the, in the Hudson Burger and Light Rail Line opened in Jersey City in Bayonne in 2001, more than 10,000 residential units were built. I could say as a direct result of that. Ridership on that line went from 1.8 million in its first year to 14.2 as of last year. Property values in Bayonne in one year increased 15% with the addition of the Hudson Bergen Light Rail Line. Urban America has relied upon some combination of bus, train, trolley, light rail, or ferry service for more than a century. Our most densely populated ci cities simply could not function without mass transit. I see the future in which smaller urbanized uh, centers benefit from transit options. Towns such as Rawway, which has seen a resurgence uh, because they utilize their mass transit, where 1,000 units of residential uh, space was built and a 100-room hotel. I see that happening in Elizabeth. We're investing $50 million in the upgrade of the rail station uh, there. I see that's where I grew up, and I've always wondered why that, that train station has not, um, area, that area has not redeveloped. I think you will see that now. And you'll see it in South Amboy with the ferry service that's going in there. And that has been, that has been a town that has been in need of a new, new future and that is going to happen in South Amboy. It is happening in Harrison. Um, as I said, the real estate values benefit from the transit facilities because public transportation is far more convenient for commuters and driving, especially in a state such as this. Areas like Morristown, Cranford, Montclair have all realized this new mixed-use development around their train station. In my job, I hear from Bridgewater, Bridgewater, and places in Sussex County have all come to me and said, we want mass transit. Those are places that didn't, that were only places where we would have cars. Now, when you have Sussex County leadership and the freeholders say, we want some mass transit um, in Sussex County, you know where the future is. Um, my job as chairman of the New Jersey Transit Board of Directors is to fight for resources um, to maintain and improve a complex statewide public transportation system that provides almost a million trips a day to people. That brings me to one of my favorite topics. Strictly speaking, I'm the commissioner of the Department of Transportation, but I'm really the shepherd of the TTF, the Transportation Trust Fund. My mission by the governor is to find a way to replenish 
the Transportation Trust Fund. That is, I need to find 41 and 21 votes in a legislature for the first time in 25 years to find money to put into investing in our infrastructure. If it were easy, it would have been done a long time ago. There'll be tough times along the way. There'll be ups and there'll be downs, and there are different opinions as to how we should proceed. A recent poll finally made my, been made my day. When I took the job seven months ago, there was a poll saying about 22% of the public would support a revenue enhancer. In this case, they tested the gas tax. Now it's at 50%. And I think it's, in, it, 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 and obviously I believe that we, our message is getting out that something has to be done if we're gonna move, if we're going to move into the next century and do what we need to do to make sure our economy remains strong. Um, I spend a lot of time talking around the state about the conditions of our roads and our bridges. When you have 300 bridges in the state of New Jersey that are structurally deficient, we have a problem. When we sit at the Holland and Lincoln and George Washington Bridge for an hour and a half trying to cross the river, we have a problem. Um, the DOT is filled with some very talented people. And they are not miracle workers, however. And we are doing a lot more, a little less. 15 years ago, there were 6,000 employees at the Department of Transportation. Today, there are 3,000 employees at the Department of Transportation. And they're challenging because, and you can tell by the, the economy is improving because we're getting our permit, the permit applications are coming in and I've got half the number of people to try to get them out the door. The biggest complaint that I hear from people in this room is they're not getting permits enough, and that is true. And there is a reason for that, the reason that we have not invested in the people who actually do the work. When you go from 15 years ago of 6,000 employees to 3,000 employees, and those are by and large engineers. Those are highly educated people. When you have those type of numbers, you know you have a problem. Um, and the same goes for New Jersey Transit, where Ronnie Hakem leads a team that struggles every single day to keep an aging fleet operational and customer friendly. If we had proper resources, we could extend and, and build the Hudson Bergen Light Rail Line both into Bergen County and into other areas of Jersey City. The Gloucester County line in southern New Jersey, buy new cars. We have cars that, uh, transit cars that are 50, 60 years old. Um, replace the Portal Bridge, a billion dollars, and build a new tunnel into New York, which must be done if we're going to be serious about keeping this economy moving. Because we know with Amtrak announcing that as a result of Sandy, that one of those two tubes at any time could be shut down for repair. These projects will improve the quality of, of life in New Jersey and make it a place where our children and grandchildren will want to stay. In addition to these projects, I urge that the Port Authority move forward and replace the outmoded bus terminal, as expensive as it is, in New York, which is a third world country bus terminal. And to extend the path to Newark, which is controversial. I just finished reading Brendan Burns' book. And all of you from New Jersey, or who mostly you know, are my age, I suggest you read it. It's a history, it's his life, but he goes through the public you know, the, the issues that they faced, and he faced, and the legislature faced. <laughs> he proposed the path extension to Newark Airport in 1975. And he fought with the Port Authority who pushed back, and pushed back, and we're here we are in 2015, having the same discussion. But Brendan Byrne wanted to go not just only there, and I think he wanted to go to Plainfield beyond that 
when it was done. Because if we, when, if we took the, the path to Plainfield, we would revitalize Plainfield. Because that is the future of the revitalization of areas such as that. Those arguments are still being had. And, and you know, when I read reports and newspaper articles written by 22-year-olds who have no concept of history, of what happened in this day, and why things move forward or didn't move forward, then I know we have a problem. But I'm going to continue to talk about those type of projects. Despite a half a billion dollars in uh, TTF support for New Jersey Transit and another 1.6 billion in federal aid, the corporation was forced to propose a fair increase of 9%. The size and complexity of these projects will take um, cooperation between all the transportation um, entities. That being, you know, the Port Authority, Amtrak, uh, um, New York City, the ferry operators. All of us need to work together. I was in Washington the other day, meeting with the Secretary of Transportation, and we talked about how we can work together to find a fair, funding system for a new tunnel. That doesn't put the burden just on New Jersey, but in fact, it, it in fact involves the, the federal government, the state of New Jersey, the city of New York, and um, the Port Authority. I'm here to you today, I would ask, I need your help. I ask you to join with others to move to get this transportation trust fund renewed. We do not have a choice. Our parents and grandparents built the greatest society the world has ever seen. The George Washington Bridge, the Lincoln Tunnel, the Holland Tunnel, the Parkway, the Turnpike, just to name a few. What have we done? What have we done in this generation? Can we say that we have added to that? I say that we have a challenge um, to keep up with what they did, to do half of what they did, to make sure that this economy stays strong. I think we have a responsibility and a duty to do that. Um, and I think it's time to get serious and and let's do the right thing, and I need your help to do it. Thank you very much for having me. <clears throat>